Namaskar, hello and welcome viewers. You're watching Committee Report with your host Kruti Mishra. Today we'll take a closer look at the report of the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Science, Technology, Environment and Climate Change on Wildlife Amendment Bill 2021. The report analyzes the Wildlife Protection Amendment Bill tabled in the Lok Sabha in December 2021. The Wildlife Protection Act of 1972 provides a legal framework for the protection of various species of wild animals and plants, management of their habitat, and the regulation and control of trade in wild animals, plants, and their parts and products. While it has been amended several times, the latest set of proposed amendments by the Environment Ministry were to make it more compliant to the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora, to which India is a signatory. It regulates international trade in over 38,700 species of wild animals and plants. Before the detailed analysis, let's take a look at this report. The original act regulates the protection of wild animals, birds and plants. The bill seeks to increase the species protected under the law. The committee believes that this infrastructure needs to be mobilized more meaningfully in the cause of wildlife conservation, protection and management. It's always a compromise. Wildlife Act, environment, biodiversity, nature protection is always a compromise. Uh, because we are not like any other country in the world. We have demographic pressure, we have developmental needs. So we have to strike a balance between protection and development between conservation and economic growth. Uh, and that's what the committee has done. For example, uh, you know, we have talked about providing drinking water supply uh, to people living uh, in protected areas. Unless people living in protected areas have a stake in the protection of those areas, you know, you can't do a top-down protection of these areas. People, local people, have to develop an interest, a stake, uh, in the protection of these uh, sanctuaries and wildlife areas. The committee is in broad agreement with the amendments proposed for the protection of native Indian gene pool. The committee says while a framework to manage international wildlife trade is broadly welcome, the approach proposed in the bill will make the principal act too complicated. And for deeper insights, I'm joined by an illustrious panel of guests. Joining us through virtual platform, Mr. Prakash Chabrekar, former minister, Environment, Forest and Climate Change, currently member of the Upper House. And joining us in the studio, Dr. M.K. Ranjit Singh, former Director, Wildlife Preservation. I welcome both of you on Sunset TV and thank you so much for joining us. And Mr. Davrekar, let me begin the program with you. The original act was amended in 1982, 1986, 1991, 1993, 2002, 2006 and 2013 as well. The proposed amendments of 2021 are likely to be the most expansive so far in scope. It covers more areas of legislation. Take us through the key objectives of this bill. First, let us understand that India is probably the only country which worships wild animals, animals and flora and fauna. So it is in our ethos. And therefore, we see, despite all constraints, we have very robust wildlife. 70% of the world tiger population, 70% of Asiatic lions, 30,000 uh, elephants, 3,000 plus single horn rhinos. And we have taken unseen steps to protect them effectively and to ensure that habitat and everything is developed to suit their growth. Ranjit Singh, I have worked with him. He was our expert member. And he has seen how National Board of Wildlife had no meetings for two or three years before we came to power and before I became environment minister. We came out with this standing committee formula because in National Board of Wildlife, Prime Minister is the chairman in State Wildlife Board. It is the chief minister who is. 
and definitely they will not get time for all these meetings so we started with standing committee where there are expert member himself he was there and therefore one recommendation about this it can be raised assured that there are non official members in standing committee also and that will start taking decision for better of betterment of wildlife so this is the first thing which they have recommended committee but at the outset let me also say that standing committee is the best form in parliamentary democracy where all party representative discuss and come out with various suggestions and i think 50% of the suggestions given by standing parliamentary committee uh, is are accepted by the government and we have record of 7 8 years of this scale where we accept the reasonable and if we can't accept we give reasons for why we cannot and therefore this is very important uh, i welcome that the committee has deliberated in deep in depth and has come out with suggestions recommendations so recommendations are always a healthy democratic practice as they have said there has to be forum i don't see there is there is always forum and rajit singh is testimony to see that all the state officials which are required which will plead their cases and our members we always had forum and so i don't see any problem having a forum for even standing committee so there are non official members expert members in national board of wildlife and there will be for expert members in state like wildlife board and they definitely they have place in the standing committee why we have come out with this standing committee for the state is that state chief minister because it doesn't get time many cases remain pending for 2 years 3 years so instead we have started merely a monthly meeting and that will solve the issues permanently and that will happen the flow of uh, recommendations by the state also will come faster than is necessary because there are many development site specific projects as well as wildlife habitat uh, improvement in it all these things require frequent meetings and that can be possible only if you have a standing committee at the state level so that is first and forum i don't yes. see any problem uh, we always have more than the forum people uh, who have, who, have, who used to remain present then there is uh, what is the main purpose of the bill is to implement cites yes arrangement in latent spirit because this is the international agreement which is to protect the endangered animal species and fauna species and that is what we will do but let us not run away from the facts the committee has said something about exotic animals yes and rajit singh also knows and everybody knows that yes we came out with the notification and asked people to volunteer to register so now there is a complete register of exotic animals brought before this notification right sir and now their care has to be taken as per the rules and these exotic animals it's a world over phenomena it's not only in india people want to bring but they have to take proper care True. and that is what this notification and registration means and wildlife uh, people can really find out who is the owner who has brought it and whether they are not whether they are improve, implementing the rules or not so right sir right mr dabrekar but as you said that one of the clauses proposed by the ministry is to have a standing committee of the state board for wildlife 
Now, several environmentalists have said that it will end up being a rubber stamp for foster clearances of projects. How do you allay that concern, sir? See, what are the projects we uh, consider in National Wildlife Board or in State Wildlife Board? It is pro-environmental friendly. And it is only the development projects like, like linear lines and uh, linear projects, which are site-specific, which cannot be shifted away from that site. So it is not seen. People make applications to get due diligence. And what ministry is there, it is for faster, clear, faster approvals or not non-approvals disapprovals of the project. That is what is the duty of the government. Delaying the decision is bad in governance. Yes. So we should not delay. We can either accept, either amend, or we can, therefore, we can also do one thing, reject it. So we may, made many conditions, and Ranjit Singh also testified that we send committees to see further whether the conditions are applied, whether they are implemented, and what can be the best conditions where we can take comprehensive care of the environment, but at the same time ensure that the development doesn't stop. And that is the best way forward. That is for sustainable development. All right, so I'll talk about another important recommendation of the committee. Mr. Singh, coming to you now, the committee urged the government to set up state-level human-animal conflict advisory committees that can mitigate such conflicts, calling it a complex issue as serious as hunting. So what are the ways ahead for mitigating human-wild conflict? There are a number of ways whereby it can be reduced and to a large extent mitigated. <clears throat> it cannot be entirely stopped for the simple reason that we have now gone and occupied, uh, human habitations have gone and occupied areas within protected areas or at the edge of it. And we plant succulent crops there, which attracts the animals. So there will be conflict, but the resolution or the reduction of that is crucial for the long-term survival and conservation of, because you must have in a democracy like ours, the people on our side, it should not be that uh, it is something antagonistic. Now, we have had, as Mr. Javrika said, um, a lot in our favor because there is an empathy for nature, there is an empathy for life in this country, and people are by and large uh, very um, acceptive, uh, very uh, conducive to nature conservation. It's in our ethos. One is that uh, there should be to the extent possible, no human habitation within protected areas. They should be settled out, and we are now giving them a very good package. You must remember that the, we are not talking about animals. We are talking about natural, national heritage, which is equally important, if not more, than human heritage. It's as important as your cultural, religious, any architectural heritage. And the only hope for its survival happens to be in about 5 to 4 percent of our protected areas. Now, those areas must at least be sacrosanct, like we would not like to have mining in the premises of the Taj Mahal or blasting on adjacent to Ajanta and Elora. We should have the same consideration for our our, there are also, to that extent, temples of God. They are na na havens of hope. The national, the, the, the protectors of our national natural heritage. And that aspect should not be lost. Look, we all know that we have to have development. And in, in the project proposals which come before us, there are options. And the options are, you see, we have very rarely had to say no. We have said, don't do this, but do this. It costs more. But 
the nation must be prepared for that. You mustn't forget that ours is the only one of the very few countries of the world whose constitution says that it is the fundamental duty of the citizen to protect forest and wildlife and the directive principles of, of the state enjoins upon the government to protect forests and wildlife. And therefore, it's a constitutional obligation of both government and, 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 and the citizen. Now, in that context, <clears throat> as I said, there are options. Either you avoid the road and go outside it or go underneath it. If you can go underneath for hundreds of kilometers to build um, railways and metros within cities, and why not? Why can't we go a few uh, kilometers underground to save the national natural heritage and corridors? Right. That is the, the, the... And I will just say this, that um, since the matter was raised, not about the amendments of the Act, but about the, the Standing Committee, I realize that uh, the Standing Committee, the National Board cannot meet the Standing Committee, must exercise its franchise True. in that context. Uh, but at the same time, look at the track record. The, National, uh, the St Standing Committee only meets to clear projects. <laughs> and the track record is 98.6% have been cleared. Right. <laughs> and they have been cleared right through those places. Why do we have to split them? <clears throat> Can we not in, uh, undertake that exercise that uh, we should avoid them, that right, we should sir. circumvent them? Right. That is the, the, the thing. Are we going to, as Gandhiji said, and if I may end with this, as Gandhiji said, there's everything in nature to satisfy the need needs of everyone, needs. but there is nothing in nature to satisfy the greed of anyone. Are we going to save only that which remain the residue after satisfying the need and the greed of everybody, right, right. then we might as well <laughs> forget about conservation. Absolutely, sir. But uh, with that very thoughtful quote, let's uh, move ahead and also talk about another important aspect. Mr. Javadekar, the Parliamentary Committee also said that while it was in agreement with the rationalization and reduction of schedules, it finds a number of species missing in all the three schedules. What is your take, sir? No, let us understand that we are protecting each and everything in our laws also and societies where we are signatories, they have not reduced their list and we are not tampering with their list. The issue is how to give sustainable development with definite mechanism to preserve the nature, but also ensuring development. I'll give two examples. One is from Nagpur to Madhya Pradesh highway was passing through Pench and uh, other uh, animal parks. So what has happened is we built a flyover and surprisingly within one year, 5,000 times tigers have used that underpass and are moving freely. So you are protecting the nature as well as even while erecting the roads or rail, we are now made compulsory to have a cement square or something near the site because the reptiles can take shelter because they need heat. They need warmth. And therefore, that also we have taken care. But let us also not let us also understand that animal human conflict. Five hundred people die every year. Yes. They get killed by elephants. Hundred elephants get killed. We have to ensure that both human and elephants don't get killed. So that is the final target. And I can believe, I can say that we have not enclosed somebody's area. They will live peacefully among themselves. So what we found was that elephants are coming out because they don't get 
protein because whatever they eat bamboos or something the lantana and other species take take over so we have now started cleaning those and planting new things and at the same time we have launched a scheme of water and fodder augmentation in the forest area so i think overall we have we cannot see in isolation we have to see in perspective in context in totality and the totality we are implementing nature conservation rules more effectively we are also uh, implementing the best sustainable ways forward and therefore i think that uh, everybody will agree and finally now with this recommendation there will be lot of discussion in parliament that's good sign because we don't want anything to be rushed it has been given to standing committee on each of their recommendation the ministry and the government will reply either accepting or rejecting but with the reasons and ensuring that our path is sustainable development that is what how we are going ahead absolutely it's all about sustainable development and protecting our wildlife as well and also catering to the human needs but talking about another important aspect that is of deterrence mr singh the committee is in broad agreement with the amendments proposed for ensuring deterrence by enhancing fines but the focus has to be on stricter enforcement of the existing laws as well what could be the mechanism sir the enforcement of the act with the we um the uh, the forces that are in the field firstly we need to train these people they need specialization there was a national forest commission which uh, which um, stressed upon specialization within the forest department because uh, when you are managing a national park or a sanctuary you must be qualified enough to know what how to manage it and you also must know the laws that is one part of it and this is the age of specialization and i regret to say this specialization has not been achieved and it is the officers are put there as of cadre management rather than any particular specialization absolutely sir so the focus has been on increasing the species protected under the law and implement the convention on international trade in endangered species of wild fauna and flora On that note thank you so much for joining us Mr Jabrekar and Mr Singh Next week we'll return with incisive analysis and highlights of another important committee report till then take care and stay tuned to Sunset TV namaskar and goodbye for now